Welcome to Broadlands, Hampshire and the finals of the British Carp Angling Championships 2022. Now, we have got 16 pairs of the top competition carp anglers in the whole of the country here. And they're competing for the biggest prize in the UK. A huge part of history is likely to be made. And yes, there's a big check too. 20,000 quid is up for grabs and it'll be given away by the end of this weekend. about 10 years ago. Uh, I think we managed fourth then, but uh, as we've got older, we're just really pleased to be here. So uh, yeah, happy day for us. I do believe we finished third last time we was here. Yeah, yeah, last final we've done was third, like Jay said, but that was a good few years ago. Uh, just see what happens when he got the draw shortly, so that's going to determine a lot of things for everyone on the floor. Very glad to be back. It's been a long time since we've been on Broadlands. I think the last time was for me, 2015 when I was sort of seven years ago. I mean obviously it's a great title and we've we've done well in various other carp comps but this is you know this is really the one to win. Obviously this is the pinnacle of the competition so that's what I'm here for. I'm here to win it. No one's going to make a mistake. Everybody knows where the fish are and you know and everybody here is really good on top of their game as well. It's the last one of the missing piece basically of the jigsaw so it mean everything. Um, We've pretty much won everything there is to win, but for some reason we just can't get this one over the line. So how does the Carp Champs work? Well, for a start, it's a 48 hour competition and the winning pair will be the pair with the biggest weight of fish over the next 48 hours. They're dotted all around the lake. There's 16 places that have been marked out and they will randomly draw a place to fish from and they've got to stay there all the time. They can fish four rods between them. It can be two and two, it can be three and one, it can be four and none if they so decide. It's pairs, not individuals. So they can do more or less what they want within their water. Now qualifying for the British Carp Champs is a feat in itself. To get here has been a fairly hefty journey. There's been 16 eliminator rounds all the way around the country from north to south and you've got to finish in the top three to get out of that qualifying round. Once you've done that you then have to fish a semi-final and of course you're fishing against really good anglers from all the other qualifiers. Finishing the top eight you get on the road to Broadlands and this is where history is made. £20,000 is up for grabs. But more to the point, and everybody says this, being a part of history is what this event is about. It's been running since 1999 and some of the biggest names in carp fishing have got their names on that trophy. Well, Jamie, minutes before the start, you've drawn a peg that everybody wanted. Uh, to be fair, Rob, there is a lot of fish here. Um, it's, it's one that was high on our list. Uh, it was in our top five, but I am. Um, we have seen a lot of fish while set it up. Wind blowing in as well. It's looking good. It's got track record here too. Yeah, the conditions have got better for, for this type of area, so with a bit of luck, the fish will stay up here. Talk to me about your game plan. Obviously, you've drawn the peg. You've got a nice bit of water in front of you. There's a few fish moving. What do you do? We're going to go in lightly because there's so many fish around. We're going to try and get a few early bites rather than the fish back off, and we hope. By going in lightly, everyone else will then have their lines out and we'll hopefully help pin the fish into the area. It takes a lot of nerve not to smash straight into them and try and catch as many as possible. We've done enough to sort of know how to do it, so with a bit of luck it'll work. Well, joining me on the bank now is a man that knows a thing or two about competition carp fishing. He's fished both domestically and internationally. It's Matt Barlow. Nice to see you, Matt. Thank, Thank you for you, coming. Yes, Big so weekend you. this weekend. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a massive weekend. I mean, the, these guys, have obviously, they, they've qualified from all around the country to come down and 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 fish fish for this event i mean there's a year's worth of angling gone into to these guys getting here for some of them uh and to win it i know firsthand to win it the, the feelings of these guys would be yeah, through the roof, through how, the roof. D how do you think they're feeling now because they've they've drawn the pegs they're just getting ready to start yeah. there's, there's nerves but they'll be keen to go uh it's a real mixture of emotions you've got you've got massive excitement uh anxiousness and nervousness i mean that that first bite is massive for them. I mean, well, the first cast is massive. Well, the right, first cast, yeah, yeah, no, wrong. exactly. But no, no, where, where they're now in the swims, they would have found their spots. A lot of them, or, or currently finding their spots. 
yeah, the the once you start getting into it, the the pressure does sort of subside a little bit, and you just get into the zone, uh, and you start going through the motion of what you do all day, every day, uh, and well, hopefully for them, it, it pays dividends. Well, look, it's game on any minute now. We're behind Billy Flowers and Jamie Londers. It's about to start. This is going to be really exciting. So that's it, Matt. We're underway now, and this is Jamie Londers' peg 11. One of the Carp Team England guys, he's got fish in front of him, and his tactics are literally just catch what's in front of him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense really. There's there's a lot of fish out in front of them. Uh, so the last thing he wants to do probably is is lead around, spend a time leading and marking around and scare, potentially scaring the fish away. Uh, so I think they're going with the approach of just a few single hook baits or little bags and um, just see if they can nick an early bite or two and and get a few points on the board really. Well, that didn't take long at all, Matt. 16 minutes on the clock, and it is the right-hand rod of Billy Flowers down towards the reeds that's produced the first bite of the BCAC 2022. Brilliant start for the boys, and it does look incredibly good. Important for them to make a big start here. Yeah, we were just saying a, a minute ago how, how this bay looks so good, and obviously they've gone in with the tactics of sort of softly, softly, and, and knowing the fish were here, they've not led it around, not done a lot to scare them and just chuck single hook base at them and it's, it's paid dividends so far. You know, this is... Oh, it's not. It's a stick. Wow. What's going on here? There might be fish behind it. Is there anything behind it or not? There's not. A trailer. That is a trailer. So basically what that means is that a fish has picked up the, the line with another line that it's carrying. Well, that didn't take long, and this one looks like it's a proper one. <laughs> Interestingly, we just walked to see Jamie next door, who'd had a bit of an indication on his line there, and a pike had swum through his line, giving an indication on it. And no sooner have we got over there, but Bill is back into a fish again, and this is the left-hander. That's the one that we saw him cast three quarters of the way over. Pink wafter, game on. These boys are definitely in the zone. And Jay's running around now, just from around the other side. He's going to come on the landing net. Oh, oh, and Jay's got indication next door as well. His runner's just said that the sounder box has just indicated that there's a bite next door too. Is this a double take? And it is, so Billy's going to have to do this himself. Would you believe it? Absolutely crazy action down here at Broadlands. Billy Flowers and Jamie Londers into a fish at the same time from pegs slightly next door to each other. This is crazy, Matt. Oh, it's ridiculous. I mean, they... We said that they might get early bites because of the numbers of fish that were down here. I don't think we would have predicted the indications and the double take that we've had, and as I said, in, in slightly over 20 minutes. Uh, I mean, if it continues like this, it's going to be a very, very busy weekend for these boys. Well, it's not a small fish, this. Bill's used to catching big ones. They run to just over 40 pounds in here. Oh, and he's pulled out of it. Would you believe it? He's pulled out of it. That is tragic news. Absolutely devastating for the boys. No reason whatsoever, but that's just gone. Tense times for these two now. They said before the match, mate, that uh, this was the best draw they've ever had. Yeah, yeah, he touched on it earlier. He didn't want to get too ahead of himself. Um, but yeah, he did He did mention that this, he felt this was the best draw they'd had in a final, uh, certainly for some time. And I mean, we spoke about earlier the pressure of that, getting that first fish in. You can see, I mean, obviously Billy was very, very unlucky there and it's, it's part and parcel of fishing, unfortunately. Sometimes it doesn't go to plan. Um, but as we can see, that one does, uh, and they're on the board. We'll just run through the way procedure now. The fish is now out onto the mat. You'll see a sling, a scales, and a tripod, plus two judges. And the way sling has been put onto the scales, and it's been zeroed, which means that, obviously, it's counted back to weigh nothing at all. And the fish is then put into the sling. This is a cracking mirror carp. Fish is put into there. It's going to be lifted onto the scales. It's going to be somewhere around about the 15 pound mark, I would think. Maybe 14 ish. And it'll now just be lifted onto the scales and a weight red off the front. 16 pound, exactly. That is an absolutely fantastic start. The rain is just starting to come down here at Broadlands, but we just checked the weather. 
And guess what? There's going to be a slight change later on. The wind that's blowing into this bay is due to move from being a westerly to a northwesterly. The effect that will have remains to be seen, but the wind won't be blowing in here for very much longer. Three or four hours, so these guys have got to absolutely capitalise as much as they can while the fish and the wind are blowing in this direction. So peg nine now, this is Simon and Phil Berry. We spoke to them earlier, they were very happy with the peg. Another one where the wind is blowing into a quiet bay. And this is two teams now at this end of the lake that are in, Matt. Yeah, I mean, much, much similar to Billy and Jamie's swim. It looks prime, doesn't it? We've got this lovely westerly pumping into this corner. Uh, and it looks like the sort of area uh, with these conditions that would do fish. Uh, and... Yeah, that point's been proven by the fact they've obviously had a bite. <laughs> I've got to say, looking at him playing that, he's very casual the way he plays it. He's holding his rod halfway up. Yeah, I don't think with the first fish of the match I would be quite that comfortable. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's looking like he's just sitting there having a pleasure session. Um, but fair play, uh, keep him calm under pressure. Um, but yeah, as you said, going with the one rod tactic in the bay uh, it can, be, can be a devastating. A lot of people can ruin a small corner um, by putting too many lines into the water and, and scaring the fish off. But they've played it exactly how I'd like to think I would do in the sense of just eat it like slowly, slowly and just nick a fish at a time. Um, and yeah, it's certainly working because they're playing one. And as you said, we've just seen one, seen one crash out uh, and there's a bit of sheeting up in the middle as well. Yeah, definitely fish in this area. So let's have a look now at the action over there. Cy Berry on the rod, Phil Berry on the net. They don't look like they're too urgent with this. Could it be a catfish? They're either the coolest, calmest customers in the whole of the British Carp Champs, or this fish isn't a carp. We haven't caught sight of it yet, but I'm just looking at the way that Cy's playing it. There is a bit of tree above him so it's quite a small hole he's got it in let's have a look is it a carp didn't see it go in but it's gone in they're not jumping up and down in celebration it's definitely a carp it is a carp it's not a catfish and that has got to be the coolest way to play a fish in a final surely so Phil, you, you've, you've off to an absolute flying start now not one but three fish in the net so far just yeah. talk to us about your peg what you're fishing to um, well, we've got a plateau on to our right, which comes up to about five foot, and then a drop off down to eight foot, sandy bottom, lovely drop on the lead, but 150 bait up, baits in it, baiting up to different sizes, and just as a single pop up, I think if you've got a stringer on or anything small, I want to avoid the bream, you know, uh, and it, it went within 10 minutes, I think that's a possibly a mid 20, but I might be getting my hopes up a bit. Fantastic. Uh, well, we're not an hour in yet, and that's an three fish. And that's then, a brilliant start. And then, uh, and then size taking two out of the, the little bay there, uh, which I'd said to him, I've never seen anything in that bay. And he, he's put one in and not two out in an hour. So hope it continues. That is a cracking looking common. Looks a good 20 pounder, that one. Beautiful colours. All of the fish, of course, looked after, held in these retainer slings. They don't touch the ground. Zipped into its temporary sling and it will be weighed and recorded. So, moment of truth. 20, nearly 22, is it? 21.14, 21.15. Let's see. Marshall calls. 21 pounds, 15 ounces. Here we are now, peg 13, Simon Wheeler, Mark Sawyer. And another team on the windward end into fish. Looks a reasonable carp, this one. Currently in the lead are the berries. Circa £45, £16.9. Second place, this looks like it's going to go £20. Decent carp, this one. Some great looking fish in here. And that's definitely £20 plus. And this peg consistently hasn't produced an awful lot of fish so the boys are doing really well at the moment to get a decent one out like that so moment's truth it's a big fish it is a big fish 26 pound six is the call there that's a great fish decent fish puts them straight into second place 
Guys, great start. Big fish too. Got to be pleased with that one. We like that. Absolutely. All down to Simon, that one. Bit of intuition, bit of information. Fished a spot and it's gone off. Much to Mark's disconcert. <laughs> it disconcerted a bit. So what are you doing that for? But no, it went. So, And I did see a fish show on it prior to that. It wasn't the same one. There's a big temptation in this peg to cast towards the island because it's the biggest feature, but that doesn't normally produce that many fish. No, we've got two, three up the island at the minute and one in open water. It was the open water rod that done the, done the bite, so mm. hopefully there'll be a few more to come. Wind's looking good for the scent too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully it'll yeah. stay. It won't change. Yeah, we have seen the fish, haven't we, as well? Yeah, so. yeah. But it's good. Good start. Normally, we, we, we normally go 12 or 24 hours before we get a bite, so it's a good start it's for us. It's a racing start for us. <laughs> Peg 12 now, John Curl and Sam Fowler, fish number three this afternoon, doing very well indeed. In this lovely area of open water on the edge of the motorway bay. And once again, it seems consistent across the board that it's boilies that are doing the trick here, Matt. Yeah, yeah, almost every peg we've gone into uh, this afternoon has been, been the same, uh, the same variation of a different tactic, but, but the vast majority have been boily fishing. Those that haven't been have pretty much been breamed out by all accounts. And looking at how many fish these guys are getting now up in 12, I wonder whether the fish might be starting to turn out of that bay and move into open water, Matt. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. The, the, the fish certainly at the start of the match were held up to these guys left uh, in front of Billy and Jamie. Um, but where that wind and stuff's died off a little bit and, and the angling pressure, oh, there we go, that's in. Um, they certainly seem to have backed off uh, from that sort of corner peg in that bay now. And... Um, yeah, these guys, these guys and the guys next door are certainly starting to reap the rewards of that. Let's just have a little look at the fish in the net there. It's going to have a few minutes recovery before it comes out to be weighed, and it looks a decent fish. Could be on the knocking on the door a twenty pound. That it does look very nice down here, Matt, doesn't it? The wind is still blowing in, but there's one or two fish moving in front of them too. Yeah, no, certainly it, it, it's looking good. I mean, we've we've just been stood here for a couple of minutes and we've seen one or two fish whilst we've been playing this. I mean, that's a lovely, lovely common, um, probably mid twenties. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's looking good and it's looking good for a couple more if the fish stay in this area. Well, gents, off to a brilliant start so far. Fairly straightforward tactics too. Yeah, that's not not a bad start. I mean, I haven't had anything yet, but you know, I'm here to make up the numbers. <laughs> but no, yeah, it's been a good start. Uh, teamwork makes the dream work. John, then, <laughs> your side of the peg that's working, and it's a, a straightforward boilie approach. Yeah, it is just straight boilie. We're just going, we're using a little scoop and just scooping out four or five handfuls at a time over the rigs. Just pretty straightforward, snowman's on the bottom. Are you seeing many fish? No, we haven't seen anything out there. So, literally, found a nice little spot, nice little spot. knocked the bait on it, game on. Yeah, that's exactly what we've done. Well, gents, you're in the game, and this area is a known night area. How are you thinking? It's gonna, it's, it's gonna be one of them. Um, but yeah, the confidence is high. You know, we spoke to a lot of lads recently. The Bay officers will have all been saying, you know, this is predominantly a night water. Although it's done a few fish today, to their surprise. You know, it's yeah, we're, we're getting optimistic. I feel like we're fishing well. The spots are good. Um, there are fish out there, uh, which can be quite frustrating at times because they're not exactly jumping on the end. But like I say, it's all to play for, isn't it? Now, when you've got a pack of fish in front of you, if they're not feeding, there is a bit of a temptation to steam straight in there. Have you done that, or are you picking them off? No, we haven't yet. We just stuck to our spots and just, you know, waiting for them. There is fish showing all over the place, but I just think if we just keep casting at them, I think they're just going to move off, so we're just going to stick to where we are, aren't we? Yeah, no, I think it's a, we're playing the long game, aren't we? Yeah, it's so easy to think, we've got to cast that fish, we've got to catch that fish, but is there much longevity in it? You know, you can nick that bite and then they'll go. I found that a few years ago in the same swim um, and it's frustrating. Um, we haven't caught enough yet for them to yeah. move off. We need to catch them, so the bait, wait, and hope for the best tactic, I think, is our best tactic at the minute. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So we're coming up to the evening scores now, 7.30. That's been a really interesting day's fishing so far. It's all been that half of the lake, isn't it? Yeah, unsurprisingly, really, the wind's been hacking down down that end of the lake all day, uh, and the fish have, the fish have been down there. Uh, it's changed slightly from what we thought. I mean, there was a lot, a lot of fish in front of uh, sort of Billy and Jamie and Peg Ten, and opposite them in Peg Eleven. Um, but whether just the pressure of them fishing or, or whatever, the, the fish have certainly moved out of that back bay uh, and further up the lake, and we've had we've had the pairs sort of further up the lake from them starting to catch now this evening. No, absolutely not. They've moved around the corner. And Mark Sawyer and Cy Wheeler, they have really capitalised three very big fish as well. Two, so well, three decent 20-pounders. Yeah, no, exactly. They, they've, they've obviously had a little bit of luck in the sense that they've 
had a better stamp of fish uh, than what has been coming out. But even still, credit where it's due. There's some phenomenal angling up really tight to Wee Island. We were watching them earlier uh, and their baiting strategy. And so far, it's, it's paying dividends for them and they're, they're doing all right. Well, look, it's all to play for. 14 fish out so far here at Broadlands. It's just dropping dark. We know that the other half of the lake, that fish is better during the course of the night. The big question is who is going to be in the lead in the morning? Well, Matt, it's been a really hectic night for some of the anglers. Peg 14 being one of them. They've put four fish on the bank in a fairly short period of time this morning. Yeah, no, they've uh, they've had a nice little run of fish this morning and uh, all of a decent stamp as well, um, which has certainly moved them moved them right up the leaderboard. Um, they're on 90, 93 pound before this fish. Um, and again, it's another half sensible size fish. So we'll see where, see where this one pops in. Most of the action from this end of the lake still. Yeah, we thought they might have moved throughout the night, um, but they've certainly they certainly stayed put. We thought after that wind had dropped that they might um, they might back off in, uh, towards the other end of the lake, but uh, certainly hasn't been the case as of yet. There's obviously not a lot of wind this morning, um, so we'll see see if that pays or makes a difference. Um, but yeah, as as it stands, they've 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 not really moved the bulk of the fish as of yet. Well, boys, that was a bit of action. Good night for you. Yeah, it was, uh, to be fair, very slow into the first night, wasn't it? It was like up until midnight, we were sitting there like, where's our bites coming from? Um, made a slight change, and then the bites started trickling. Your baited spot, Rob went, didn't it? Yeah. Um, they're out there, if I'm honest with you. They are out there. It's just finding a way to catch them um, while keeping the fish in the, same, in the area at the same time. So, yeah, it's been a tricky one, sort of navigating through that. But, yeah, we'll come out looking good and we're still here. So. Day chances, do you reckon? Yeah, we're hoping so. Today's a bit warmer, so we're actually hoping that the island will produce a lot more fish. Like yesterday, it was chopping through with all the wind, so it was a lot more, you know, harder and stuff like that, and there was too much of a ripple. So today, it's a lot flat, calm, warmer, so hopefully, you know, the islands will produce a few more fish today. Peg one again, Ashes are Tony Reynolds and mid-morning action. Fish. More or less out of the blue, down to the right hand side on the pads. And the big question now is are these fish moving into the shallows and the margins as we earlier suggested they may well do. Not a big fish, just into double figures. £12.3 ounces is the call. But once again, nice steady action. Gents, is this it? Is this the start of the charge? Uh, anything's possible. We've seen a few fish showing, so. Obviously, as soon as the sun's come out, we've had a few bites on the pads. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure going on up there. And hopefully, they've started to back off from it and work their way back down to here. So. It looks lovely down that bottom end, doesn't it, Tom? It does. It looks really carpy. I mean, it, it has done all weekend, but it's been really quiet. But it just looks like this morning, some fish have started to show up. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, we're confident, we're steady. We ain't put hardly any bait in. We're just you know, a couple of handfuls each bite. And, uh, and hopefully, we can keep it going today. Bags, sticks, singles, just nicking them? Just singles, just singles, um, tight, tight to the, there's a, some pads out there, really tight, trying to get underneath them if we can. Um, and that's it, yeah, handful of bait, perfect. Decent amount of water moved there now as these fish start to come on the feed here at Broadlands. Late afternoon, and it's the left-hand pair this time. Most of the fish were in open water, but it's the left-hand rod of Carl Palmer. He's been fishing that quite close to the island. And it's in. And that is how you need to respond when somebody is chasing straight away. One fish landed next door, one fish landed back here. Game on. So this is the fish that is crucial for a number of reasons. Peg 14 now. Carl Palmer, Rob Burgess. This fish could potentially put them in first place. They are currently in second. It needs to be over 19 pounds. Oh, it's very, very close. 19 and a half ish. 19 pounds, seven ounces. We're gonna have a stewards inquiry on the ounces that they need, but we believe it's 141.04 that's in the lead. And we've just got to do the maths now on this to find out whether this puts them in the lead by ounces or just into second place by ounces. Either way, what it's also done is it's stretched their margin between second and third because the team in peg 15 are now chasing. And just prior to this fish, there was one pound, three ounces in it. We've also just heard on the grapevine through the marshals that next door to their left, 
the other pair that are in the running, the pair that wear third that now got knocked off the podium. Mark Sawyer and Simon Wheeler, they have just landed a fish too. So there are four teams at the moment, literally within ounces of each other. One fish at the top of the pile. It's getting really exciting here now at Broadlands. Dusk action now, Ashes are and Tony Reynolds peg one and the swim is starting to come alive. They've just had a decent fish, just over 27 pounds. They're currently on 82, chasing 95 to go up a peg. Of course, we know the front runners are around about the 140 at the moment, but we did predict earlier that the fish in this weather will come down this end, and it looks like it's right. It's incredible, actually, at this stage that, you know, an hour ago we got four teams that were battling between one fish. Very close. And actually what's happening now is that more teams are joining the party. There's potentially seven out of the 16 teams that are well in the game at the moment. Yeah, well, it's been quite a quiet day sort of across the lake. And then this evening we've just had a, a, a run of fish and it's brought a lot of people, as you say, back into contention that didn't really look like they were going to be anywhere near uh, if things had carried on the way it was. Um, so, yeah, I mean, two, two for these guys in quick succession like this is, as we say, is um, put them right back in the mix, but it's the same across the lake now. Um, very, very interesting going into the final evening. He's just going to keep his rod tip down. It's a very match fishing way of playing fish, this is. Keep the rod tip down, just get it in. It doesn't cause too much fuss. And then when the fish is just in front, lift the rod tip up and go for the netting. That's what we're going to see now. He's going to lift the rod tip up. That fish is just in the edge here. Is it ready to go? It's going to circle around underneath him. He's going to keep the pressure on, turn it back around. Oh, it's a good one. It looks like a decent common. Just walking back in the net. And it's there. Safe in the net. And that is a decent sized fish. It's going to make a huge difference and put these boys well and truly in the race. That's a lump. It's been a bit of a run for you. We spoke to you earlier in the morning and, uh, you know, it was starting to happen. But now you're one big fish away from first place. Incredible. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's a dream. I'm a bit numb at the minute. I can't quite believe how quick we're catching up. Yeah, incredible. I'm <laughs> I don't really know what to say. Yeah, no, we've, we've uh, worked hard. Um, got a few new spots going. We've managed to have one of the better fish off the spot. So I think we're going to work hard tonight and uh, just try and get a couple more bites and whatever happens, happens. But whoever wins it really deserves it. So let the best man win. Absolutely, but those two fish, £27 each, you know, 55 odd pound in two fish is a huge amount to put on the bank, so you've got some big fish in front. Good news for you, though, that open water spot could produce some fish through the night. Yeah, well, yeah exactly, so the uh, open water spot hopefully produced through the night, because obviously through the night time, the islands and the pads sort of dried up, so now we've got that rod and we've had a bite on it, potentially we could put two rods on that tonight if it starts going. <laughs> As the sun rose on the last morning, there was news from Motorway Bay. The early leaders, Billy Flowers and Jamie Londers, had retaken the lead with a flurry of fish during the hours of darkness. This year has been a huge battle, with numerous contenders over the last 40 hours. Flowers and Londers have been there before, but have never quite done enough to raise the trophy. They currently lead, but in the tightest ever finish to a British Carp Angling Championships final, just £11 separates the top five teams. With new contenders challenging at every opportunity, the big question now is have they done enough to hang in there for the last eight hours? Back now in peg 14 on the scales. And we have a fish and this will be huge. And I mean absolutely huge. £12.3 3 ounces, that puts Carl Palmer and Rob Burgess into the lead in this tournament for the first time with literally just hours left on the clock now. Three hours to go. Wow. Gents, it's, uh, it's a bit nervy, isn't it? It's been nervy it's since about... Side, yeah, it's been nervy since about 7 o'clock yesterday evening when it all started changing and uh, 
again, mate, we're, we're so expecting it to change again, I think. Yeah, Jamie, so. Billy and Jamie, you, just, you can't write them off to the last minute. They're just so good. Um, expecting them to get another one. So, yeah, we're pushing for another one. The rods are back out. Ash is on the push as well. He's probably in fourth now, depending on how big that one is. It's mad, mate. This has got to be the closest final I've ever seen. What's it like in the camp at the moment? Because this is a pretty big weekend, isn't it? Yes, mate, this is what you dream of, isn't it? We've been match fishing for so many years now, maybe not together, but, you know, separate partners, and this is it. This is the pinnacle of it, isn't it? It doesn't get any bigger, any better. And to be leading going with three hours left is just... Yeah, that's the dream, isn't it? It's the dream. But the dreams can be crushed within minutes, you yeah, know, so another bite is needed, I know that. Yeah, um, Is this your first time fishing together as a pair, then? It is, yeah. Mm, we've done four matches, uh, five matches together, and I think we've won four of them. So yeah. we're on a roll. We're on a roll. Uh, it's working. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so. So, peg one now. Tony Reynolds, Ash Izzard. Dying stages of the competition. The last morning, the British Carp Angling Championships Finals 2022. Are they about to make a dream come true? We're hearing that they have got two fish already stacked up to be weighed. They're currently lying in fifth position. 40-odd pounds off the lead. And we know the average size of fish they've caught already is pretty big. Two fish will put them right in the mix and they're playing a third one. And there it is. It's in. That's a strange netting. It went in in a strange way, but look at that. The fish is now in the net and that may well seal their fate. A little ripple of applause comes from the distance there. A come on from one of the watching followers. And that's three fish that could well put them into the lead. So this is it, the moment of truth now. Let's find out how big this fish is. We know that first place is currently 154 on the nose. It needs to be circa 18 pounds to be able to overtake that. What's the call? Coming back in now at 17 pound, 12 ounces. It's not quite big enough. The judges will do the mathematics on this, but they will see that they are just shy of first place. In fact, there are a matter of ounces in it. A couple of three hours ago, they were in sixth place. They're now currently in second by nine ounces. Burgess and Palmer keep the lead. Well, it's drama once again here at Broadlands. Behind us, you can see it's peg one. It's Ash and Tony. They've got another fish. They are currently nine ounces behind first place, but this fish will put them in the lead. It's amazing, Matt. Oh, it's been a ridiculous morning. They they had a flurry of fish earlier on, uh, which, as you said, moved them up from well, they moved them up from sixth into second, but by the f the smallest of margins, nine ounces. They've just had this one, but the drama continues because the guys who are currently in first, we've just heard from on the radios, we've got a fish to weigh. Uh, so, we're depending essentially, depending who has the bigger fish, we'll we'll take the lead now. Absolutely, it's that close. Let's just have a little recap as well. Billy and Jamie yesterday were in fifth place. They managed to shoot up to first this morning. They lost their first place to Rob Burgess and Carl Palmer, who've been there or thereabouts, second or third, for a while. First place, Simon Wheeler and Mark Sawyer, they dropped down from first to second to third, now to fourth. These guys, they were in sixth place yesterday. They then rocketed up to first place in the morning. If you can follow that, then you're better than I am. £10.6 six ounces. So that's £10.6 six ounces. So that puts these guys in the lead now by £9.12 ounces, there or thereabout. Exactly. £9.13 yeah. ounces. The big question now is how big is that one going to be? If it's bigger than that, they'll go back into the lead. Wow. One hour left. Drama at Broadlands. Just when you thought it was more or less all over, it really isn't Sam Fowler, John Curl, peg 12. Where in the lead? Drop down, possibly down as far as fourth place, but they're still in the game. One decent fish will put them right back up there and challenge for that pole position. Nervous times here at Broadlands now. None more so than these two, I would think. Just as an update, they are on 141.04. In the lead at the moment is around about 153. But we do have another fish to be weighed for Rob Burgess and Carl Palmer. But it really isn't over. Still a spirited fight right under the rod tip and John's 
knees are going to be shaking wanting to get this in because it does mean so much. It looks a decent fish. It's on the surface. The lead is dropped. It's on its way in. It's over the net cord. It's in! Look at that. They are very, very happy with that one. Now then, is this enough? It looks a decent fish. I've just heard the word 20 mentioned and circa 20 pounds is potentially enough to put them into first place. Game on. We'll step back now and just let these guys get themselves sorted. But this is just so exciting here. Our eyes have been diverted from these two, Sawyer and Wheeler, to Flowers and Londers, to Reynolds and Taylor, to Palmer and Burgess, and now back here again. Who knew, who could know what an incredible event this has been? And this may well be the £20,000 fish. The fish being looked after there, it's just going to be put into that wasteling. Zipped up and across, made safe. It can sit safely in there for the time being, just while they get the rods back out, it can have a breather. It's just checking the fins are nice and safe when it's lifted up, it's not going to get damaged. And back in the water it will go for a time being as John rushes to get his rods out because if there's one, there may well be others. Well, would you believe it? No sooner have we seen Sam and John just a little bit further up the bank catch a fish that could well take them into the lead. But the recast of Rob Burgess, the one that went really tight under the trees, the one that looked absolutely fantastic, has gone off. He's not been out there 10 minutes. He's playing this really carefully at the moment, really gingerly. I'm not sure whether that might either be snagged or in something risky. There's a tree just in front of him in the water. As we look to the margins over on that far side, there's a stump just in the water that you may or may not be able to make out. And that's where he was fishing to, really tight under the reeds there. And this is just incredible at Broadlands. There are so many teams in contention. We have seen the team that was in sixth place go up to first, knocking others down. The team that was in fifth place go up to first, knocking the others back down. The team that was in fifth place then go back up. The lead has changed so many times, it is absolutely ridiculous. Currently, we think, that Rob Burgess and Carl Palmer, both here, are in the lead. Well, live again. And this is pick 12. Would you believe it? We've just been up with peg 12. We've seen them catch fish. Sam Fowler and John Curl went into the lead, or very close. They dropped back, they've just started catching again. And they've got one ready to be weighed that will put them back up there. They are one fish away from winning this tournament, one fish away from overtaking, and that's now currently being played. Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. I just can't get round, my head round this at the moment. You'll hear I'm slightly out of breath because I've just run up the bank and it literally is like a game of tennis. One swim catches, then another, then another. And we've had four different leaders. Is it going to go in? This is the one. Oh, wow. Apologies for any language you may have heard there, but there's emotion on that. And that, I am pretty sure, will put them into the lead of the British Carp Angling Championships with 18 minutes left on the clock. 18 minutes left and they've just taken the lead. We know that there is currently a fish snagged with Rob Burgess and Carl Palmer. We know that if it comes in, then we have to decide or we have to see which is the biggest fish out of the two. This is John. It's action stations now because he's had a bite. He knows there's more fish out there to be caught. So he's just going to be putting a rig on there straight away, getting that back out because 10 minutes ago, they landed that other fish that's in the sling down there just behind Sam. And suddenly it's game change again. Absolutely incredible. That fish has freed itself. It's tangling round one of the other lines.
and these guys will know that next door has just caught one. So although the fish haven't been weighed, they're actually second place at the moment. But if this one comes in, it will almost certainly put them back into first. They're allowed to wade up to waist depth. Big question is whether or not without his waders, he's gonna go straight in, sacrificing his shorts, he is. There is no way that he wasn't going to. He wants to get as quick to that fish as he possibly can. There's gonna be a cheer if that one goes in. It's in. Oh, wow. What can we say? Oh, that's a good one. That, that is a good one. And that really does mean a huge amount. There's no time for standing back and looking at that though, because there's 12 minutes left on the clock and there's fish to be had. Oh, what on earth can you say? 33 pounds an ounce is what we need. The first fish is well over 17. 17 pound 12 is the first one. The next one needs to be circa 16 pounds to take the lead. Scales is zeroed. Final moments of the British Carp Angling Championships. And would you believe it, it will be decided with either this way or a fish. This is it. It looks a decent fish. It looks a good 20 pounder. There's three minutes left. So we've got eyes on the scales. This is a lovely distraction for the boys not to have to worry about fish down there. Peg 10 has a fish on. Peg 10 have a fish on. That is Billy and Jamie. You need 17 pounds for this to go into the lead. Three minutes less. That is, call it. Twenty four. 24-13. Wow. It's less than one minute left in the finals of the British Carp Angling Championships. This has been the closest ever competition and standing in front of us are Rob Burgess and Carl Palmer who in the last 10 minutes have just taken the lead. It's been incredible. Absolutely incredible. And there's a bite on. Would you believe it? <laughs> what a way to finish. You've got 10 minutes to land it. Is the hooter going to go? <laughs> There it is! There it is! Let's just double check that nothing is being played up there. It isn't. We can say, boys, that you are the new British Carp Angling Champions. Congratulations, and Carl, what a way to finish. <laughs> Well, let's just have a quick chat with you boys now while uh, while we've got some emotion we've got a fish in the net you've just won the british carp champs you're 20 grand richer in a place in history that sounds lovely doesn't it oh, oh my god it's unbelievable dreams that, come true aren't it i'll tell you what though oh. fair play to everyone else that is one hell of a final like everyone's at it until the last minute competing trying to get up trying to just niche up that little bit more but yeah i don't know what happened. the last it. half an hour is just surreal it's just like every time the alarm went off it's like huh yeah. Huh? Unbelievable. For once I'm speechless, yeah. 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 I've been trying to win this for years, so, you know, to actually win it is unbelievable, so. You were getting so many, so many good anglers. <laughs> Said you couldn't write Billy on Jamie off. Minutes to go and, they're, and they're, they're still doing it. Back on the podium. And, you know, if you look at the history of the British Carp Angling Championships, it's been going for 23 years. There are some huge names on that list. Yours is now on it. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? It won't drop in until it won't. Know. No, this is. It's gonna. <laughs> the anxiety, the stress, just. Oh no, it's shaking earlier. You, you might know though. You dream of this, don't you? Yeah. You talk about it, but the reality is, it's so difficult to win. You need the draw. You need other anglers. You just know what I mean? Need a bit of luck as well. It's just. Oh. So this is how the scoreboard looked at the end of the tournament. So so close that battle for the final honours. Absolutely incredible. But it was Rob Burgess and Carl Palmer, those final two fish that did it for them, our new and worthy British champions. And here they are, the new British champions, Rob Burgess and Carl Palmer. Carl going up and shaking hands, Rob following through there. Absolutely superb, very, very well fished indeed. They take a worthy win. An incredibly nail-biting final round there. A final never to be forgotten.